The other night we stacked the wood really quick just to get it off the ground because it was going to rain and um, it's kind of all over the place and it's stacked really high which isn't great. I'm sure the uh, management here is probably not going to love that. So now we're just going to move it and restack it and kind of get it more into its uh, permanent location because this wood's going to be around for a little while. We're not going to go through it super fast. So we want to make sure <laughs> that it looks all right. Red's enjoying it, so that's good. Since our tiny house is parked in a community, we have to just be mindful of the rules and make sure that we're doing everything we're supposed to. We moved the pile of wood that was up in the front here. We doubled these so they're a little shorter so that we don't get in trouble. And we did another stack in the back there. So I just think it looks nicer. Now I'm gonna process through this pile of sticks here so that we have smaller pieces so it's easier to get the fire started. I think that's the big trick for that. And then Pat's got the electric chainsaw out so he's gonna process some of the, the smaller pieces that we can break up right now. Hopefully this thing works through it. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. Oak is pretty hard, right? Yeah. Yeah, all right, well, see how long the blade lasts. Perfect. It doesn't have to be that small. <laughs> no. No. Okay. We'll do different sizes. Yeah. It's better than using the hacksaw. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> that would have taken me like three hours. <laughs> We've noticed that we have to pay extra careful attention to the weather because then we can pick the days like this that are pretty nice where it's pleasant to work outside to process wood or if we have to clean the stove pipe. Those are the days that it's a little better to do it. Okay, hey, got a good variety of like medium and small and then Pat chopped up a bunch of that wood that was over here so it looks pretty good cleaned it out oh hello Redford you come to inspect our work all right <laughs> got those piles covered with the tarp did some raking more wood back there so I think we're pretty set for at least a while we'll see how long this would last for. The next project for the day for getting the tiny house ready for winter is to put these underneath the mattress to ventilate. So we're supposed to flip our mattress pretty regularly and we probably don't do that as much as we should because one side is firm and one side is soft. I like the soft side. Um, so this is supposed to go underneath the mattress to make sure there's no condensation, moisture, so we don't get mildew. Um, and this is probably long overdue because we were going to get the ones that they put in boats, which was like over $200 for a king size mattress. These are like floor liners for gyms or kitchens. So this is a lot cheaper. I think this was like $25, but probably gonna need another one. I don't think this is gonna be enough for the, the king size mattress, but I'm gonna go put them up there and see how it works. The next thing on the to-do list for the wood stove was to use this high temperature sealant to seal all the seams in the stovepipe. We decided to do this because a few nights before we had started a fire in the stove and maybe an hour into it, our carbon monoxide detector went off. Now we actually have two carbon monoxide detectors in the house and only one of them went off and it was our older one. So we're not sure if it just malfunctioned or what happened, but just to be extra, extra safe, we decided to do everything we could to reinforce the stovepipe to make sure that nothing was leaking. And the first part of that was using this high temperature sealant everywhere that there was a seam. 
we did the caulking on the pipe for the wood stove yesterday on the flue and we're just giving that a couple more hours it needs at least 24 hours to cure before you do anything to it so uh, we'll be able to have a fire in the wood stove tonight but we're also going to put this flue tape on just to be extra 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 careful <laughs> to seal the seams uh, make sure everything is working properly and then I'm gonna see if I can use that to attach this temperature gauge for the flue there's the temperature gauge so that's for the flu. So it's a little different than the one that's actually on the side of the stove. And uh, I have to clean off the paint, which was kind of a miserable failure. <laughs> um, but at least part of it's still red. This part will stay red, but that, it just gets too hot up there. So yeah, gotta clean that, <laughs> clean that off. And then when that's all ready, I think we're going to try to cook on the stove tonight. We haven't really made anything serious. We tried to do popcorn one time, which was fun, but we haven't like cooked anything. So I think we might try to roast potatoes tonight. So that'll be neat. Once the high temperature sealant had dried for 24 hours, I went back over it with this metal tape, which is made for this exact purpose. We figured two layers of protection to make sure that everything was sealed really well. Um, but as a note, just make sure that you wear gloves because the edge of this tape is very sharp and you really have to press it down so that it gets a good seal, but it does work very well. Then I moved on to the next thing on my to-do list, which was taking some of the extra Reflectix that we had from covering up the windows in the scamp and we decided to use that to make a an insulative barrier for the big glass sliding door that we have. I love the glass sliding door. It lets in so much light, especially in the summer. It's great to have that open, but in the winter, it is really cold. When you stand next to it, you can feel how much heat you're losing through that. So I decided to create this insulative barrier that will put on the door overnight, and that will help to keep more of the heat from the wood stove in. Originally, our plan was that one of us would get up at some point during the night and throw a log on the fire, but with the Grizzly stove being so small, you do have to feed it pretty regularly, and we knew that was one of the downsides before we even bought it. We figured one of us would probably get up during the night, but reality is that we're really not that good at getting up at night, so instead we figured out that if we get the fire going pretty well, and then just leave it and go to bed. The house is pretty warm. And if we insulate the windows well, like using the Reflectix and we have insulated blinds on the rest of the windows, they have a, an air layer in between them and a reflective foil built into them. That is pretty efficient at holding the heat inside of our house. So we've had some nights where it's gone down into like the mid to low 20s and it will be somewhere around 60 degrees in the house when we wake up in the morning. So really not too bad. And um, I think this adds to keeping the heat in the house pretty well. Okay, I think I got the insulation for the glass door pretty much where I want it. I ended up cutting the wider pieces into these um, narrower slivers. I divided them up into these panels because I want it to kind of fold like an accordion when I put it away during the day so that it opens this up and I get all of that sunlight again because that's the main benefit of having such a large glass area is to get that sunlight during the day when I'm cooking the kitchen. It's so nice. Um, but this I think is really going to cut down on how much heat we lose at night or how quickly we lose the heat from the wood stove. And then I'll pull over one layer and then two layers of curtain to go on top of that. That'll really hold it in place. I think I have to do a little bit more taping to some of the seams, but overall pretty happy with uh, how it turned out. We can test it out tonight. I think it's gonna be pretty cold. We really think that the process of getting the scamp and having a real RV has made us better at living in a tiny house and I think this is a good example. If we didn't have the RV we probably wouldn't have tried this and this is going to make a big difference in our comfort because 
the reality is that living in a tiny house in the winter is just harder. You have to work harder to keep your heat in. You have to work harder to make sure that your pipes don't freeze and to keep yourself comfortable. And I think this is something that's going to be quite helpful with that. These are the blinds that we have on most of the other windows in the house, except for the really high ones over in the kitchen. And we put these in pretty soon after we got the house because it was new construction. So you get it as pretty much an empty shell, but so inside of it, it's made of paper basically with foil on the inside. And it has this kind of honeycomb ish structure that holds air in there. And then it was cut to fit the size of our window. We just went to Home Depot and you actually give them the measurement and they cut off the sides so that it fits there. And then we installed them ourselves and we've been really happy with them. They do a great job of just helping to close up the tiny house at night and keep the heat in, which is the, the main thing with the wood stove so that we don't have to get up. The only thing is, and this happened in my regular house too, but it creates a little bit more condensation on the windowsill and you'll get like a little bit of mildew sitting in the windowsill, so I have to clean that later, but that happens in a regular house too. That's not, not uncommon in the winter, but I am really happy with these, uh, these blinds. They weren't super expensive, but um, probably a little bit more, definitely more expensive than just getting regular curtains, but I think it's worth it for the energy savings, for sure. The other thing that we added to the tiny house, maybe, Maybe about a year ago, a little less than a year, are these recycled plastic floor mats. And they kind of remind me of um, the type of floor mats that they use in Japan, but they're not made of the natural woven material. Those are very expensive. These were, I think, like $90 each for the really big ones, and it fit the width of the tiny house perfectly. But this material, the color is really fun, but the material makes the floor feel so much better. When you first come down, out of the loft, little pieces of wood. <laughs> it's the, the cost of having a wood stove is there's always tiny pieces of wood everywhere. It's just part of it. We take out the Dyson vacuum all the time. Um, but I'll flip this over. This is where they overlap. We got two of them and put them end to end on the floor and that makes the floor so much nicer. You can walk barefoot on this and it will feel pretty comfortable. Even with the skirting around the outside of the house, the floor still gets cold. So. That was a really nice upgrade. Do you think they're done? They are. Yeah, they're kind of done. I'm just going to let the, let the chicken stand for a little bit longer. Well, you worried about you and me, the injustice, the next president to be, the news and watch here your career. It's time for you to face those fears, and it's all fair to be aware and I'll be there, so don't be scared. Take a deep breath of air And one, two, three to ten You begin to focus again And though time flies We have enough to realize This bigger than the both of us